thank you for joining us at First Christian Church in Wilmington, Ohio. We are here this morning to do a little uh, Sunday School lesson with the flannel graph board, and maybe you've caught one or two of ours in the past. I don't have my usual helpers with me today. I am Carol, and today I have with me... Abigail Grace. Abigail Grace, and this is my granddaughter number three. So she's going to help us out today, and today we're going to talk about the 10th plague. If you've joined us um, last week, we talked about some of the first plagues that the Pharaoh is experiencing from God trying to get Moses and his people out of Egypt. So today we're going to see what that 10th plague was that got them out. The 10th plague. Moses went to see Pharaoh with a new message. God says this to you. Put them up there. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die tonight. There will be great crying and wailing. Only the Hebrew sons will be spared because God will protect the Israelites. Then Moses left the palace. Pharaoh. Moses told the Israelites to mark their houses with lamb's blood. Their houses would be passed over when the plague came. That night at midnight, the plague came over the land. All the firstborn sons of Egypt died. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. He was broken and sad, for his own firstborn son had died. Go, he said, leave my people. Take your flocks and herds and go. The Israelites left in a hurry. They took pans of bread, bread dough, for they did not have time to bake the bread. On their way, they stopped and asked people to give them clothing and gold and silver. The Egyptians gave the Israelites everything they could. God had put sympathy in their hearts. The Israelites hurried along the road. Some led flocks of sheep or goats, or cattle. Moses was taking, out, taking them out of Egypt to a new place all their own. They had to move very quickly. God was there to show the Israelites the way. By day, he went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. By night, he went ahead of them in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day and night. God told Moses to take the people across the desert to the Red Sea. When they got to the sea, they looked behind them. A great army was coming. Pharaoh had once again changed his mind. Now he did not want to lose his slaves, so he sent his soldiers and horsemen to bring them back. The Israelites had nowhere to run. They cried out in fear, but God again came to Moses and said, Lift up your staff and stretch your hand over the sea. Moses did as he was told, and lo, the waters of the sea divided. Between the two walls of water was dry ground so the Israelites could cross the sea. The army of Pharaoh saw what was happening. The horsemen and the soldiers in their chariots rode after the Israelites into the parted sea. But God slowed them down. He made the wheels of the chariots fall off and the horses lose their footing. All the Israelites passed through the sea. Then God said to Moses, lift your hand over the sea once more. When Moses lifted and turned his hand, the waters of the Red Sea flowed back together. The sea covered the chariots and horsemen. Pharaoh's army was washed away. The Israelites celebrated their safe journey out of Egypt all day they sang and danced and praised God. They were free. So Moses did get his people out of Egypt. The Pharaoh changed his mind once again and tried to go after him. But he was able to part the Red Sea, right? With the help of God, he got all of his people safely out and to a new land. And now we'll close with a word of prayer. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for bringing. Thank you for bringing. 
the people and the Israelites. Thank you for bringing the people and the Israelites out of Egypt safely. Out of Egypt safely. Amen. Amen.